Number 7. Guadalupe Fernandez Valencia The story of Guadalupe Fernandez Valencia is a captivating one. The woman is shrouded in secrecy within Joaquin El Chapo Guzman's notorious Sinaloa cartel. While multiple women associated with the cartel have grabbed headlines, Fernandez, one of the most powerful figures, has remained virtually unknown despite her nearly three-decade-long reign in the drug business. Known by her alias La Patrona or The Boss, Fernandez orchestrated a vast empire of cocaine trafficking, marijuana, heroin, and methamphetamine, overseeing the transportation of illicit substances from Mexico into the United States. Her role extended beyond the drug trade, as she also played a crucial part in managing the cartel's substantial financial operations. What sets her apart is her unconventional entry into the world of organized crime, beginning as a street-level dealer while living as an undocumented migrant in the United States. According to the U.S. Treasury Department, Fernandez ascended to the rank of lieutenant under the tutelage of El Chapo's son, Alfredo Guzman. Expert Jose Carlos Cineros, in an exclusive interview with Vice, revealed that the elusive nature of high-ranking women in the Sinaloa cartel contributes to Fernandez's relative obscurity. Cisneros candidly stated that occupying a prominent position like El Chapo's inevitably invites the risk of arrest or even death. Fernandez's initial encounter with U.S. authorities occurred in 1998, leading to her imprisonment in California. However, upon her release in 2009, and subsequent deportation to Mexico, she swiftly returned to the drug trade, leveraging the connection she had forged during her time in the United States to establish her own thriving trafficking operation based in Culiacan. At a certain point, Fernandez attempted to abandon her life of crime and pursue a legitimate path. Yet it wasn't long before an unidentified individual mentioned in court documents, approached her, enticing her to return to the world she knew so well. In early 2015, Fernandez faced indictment in absentia on federal charges of drug trafficking and money laundering. Just a month after El Chapo's own arrest in 2016, she was apprehended in Mexico, caught red-handed in the midst of her illicit activities. In a manner befitting her elusive nature, her arrest unfolded discreetly, devoid of any media spectacle or sensational headlines. Even after her capture, Fernandez took strategic measures to shield the true extent of her involvement from the court and public. Opting to avoid a lengthy trial, she requested a simple plea deal in 2019, confessing to drug trafficking and money laundering. In a surprising turn, she also testified at El Chapo's trial, seeking a more lenient sentence in return. Sentenced to a term of 10 years, Fernandez's fate seemed to be sealed. However, considering credit for her time served and good behavior, her potential release as early as 2022 loomed on the horizon. The question of her present whereabouts remains unanswered, leaving us to ponder whether she has once again succumbed to the allure of her dark past. Number 6. Clara Elena Laburin Former beauty queen Clara Elena Laburin descended from the glamorous heights of the pageant stage into the chilling depths of the drug trafficking underworld. It all began when she married Hector Beltran Leva, the former partner of the infamous El Chapo, thrusting her into a perilous game where power, violence and betrayal were the currency of survival. She quickly earned the nickname La Signora, a symbol of both her alluring presence and her formidable role in the criminal empire. Leva's bitter split from El Chapo in 2008 ignited a firestorm of suspicion and vengeance. Establishing his own syndicate, the Beltran Leva cartel based in Acapulco, he enlisted his wife's aid to orchestrate the cartel's intricate web of money laundering operations. The empire went far beyond drug trafficking and money laundering, plunging headlong into the darkest realms of human trafficking, extortion, kidnapping, murder, and gun running. Clara's own harrowing encounter with danger came in 2010, when she was kidnapped by rival cartel members. Enduring 13 days of captivity, she emerged unscathed and wasted no time in resuming her pivotal role in her husband's criminal enterprise. 
However, destiny took an unexpected turn when Leva was apprehended in 2014, leaving Clara to assume the reins of leadership. Seizing the opportunity, she unleashed a reign of terror, expanding the cartel's domination through a trail of bloodshed and strategic alliances with other cartels. Acapulco, once a haven for sun-soaked vacations, became the battleground for an epic power struggle. Clara's relentless pursuit of control sparked a wave of violence that plunged the popular resort town into its darkest chapter. As the body count rose, the tourism industry withered under the shadow of fear, ensnaring unsuspecting vacationers into the crosshairs of the drug war. In a dramatic twist of fate, Clara's reign of terror was abruptly halted in 2016 when she was captured in the northern city of Hermosillo. Her arrest not only extinguished her ambitions to reclaim the cartel's supremacy, but also handed victory to the rival independent cartel of Acapulco. Further tightening its grip on the region, she fought desperately to reclaim. The demise of Leva in 2018, succumbing to a fatal heart attack, marked the end of an era. While the current whereabouts of Clara Elena Laburin remain a mystery, reports suggest she distanced herself from the drug trade. As a consequence, the once formidable Beltran Leva cartel stands disbanded and extinct, leaving behind a trail of devastation and shattered lives. Number 5. Griselda Blanco In the treacherous realm of drug lords, Griselda Blanco stood as an enigma, earning the ominous alias Black Widow and La Madrina, the godmother. Renowned for her ability to morph her appearance, she became the chameleon, evading detection from those who sought to apprehend her. Blanco emerged as a formidable force within the infamous Medellin cartel, surpassing both men and women in power and influence. Her journey into the shadows of the drug underworld began in the 1970s and spanned decades, with her stronghold situated in the cocaine hub of Miami. Despite her lavish lifestyle, Blanco's opulence came at a gruesome cost. Violence and revenge were her currency, leaving a trail of bloodshed in her wake. Unyielding in her pursuit of dominance, she displayed no hesitation in orchestrating killings to cement her authority. The scars of her brutality marked the infamous era known as the Cocaine Cowboy Wars, a violent reign that plagued Miami throughout the 1970s and 80s. However, the ruthless deed she orchestrated spawned a relentless cycle of retribution. In a bid to escape her own creation, Blanco sought refuge in California in 1984. From afar, she continued to wield control over her Miami operations, directing her loyal followers to eradicate rival factions with ruthless precision. Shockingly, her orders often led to the annihilation of entire households, regardless of their involvement in the illicit trade. In 1985, the Drug Enforcement Agency closed in on La Madrina, charging her with conspiring to manufacture, import, and distribute cocaine. The state of Florida later added a murder charge to her growing list of crimes. Despite a 20-year sentence, Blanco's early release and subsequent deportation to Colombia in 2004 belied the magnitude of her transgressions. Yet fate caught up with the Black Widow in a chilling climax. In 2012, as she innocently purchased meat at a local butcher shop, an assassin executed her with a single fatal bullet to the head. This abrupt end marked the demise of Griselda Blanco, extinguishing her reign as a drug lord matriarch. Her legacy, forever etched in the annals of true crime, serves as a haunting reminder of the depths to which one woman descended in her quest for power and dominance. If you were a powerful crime boss, what would your nickname be? Tell us in the comments and hit subscribe while you're at it. Number 4. Sandra Avila Beltran Sandra Avila Beltran was always a fearless woman. She defied stereotypes and rose to the pinnacle of Mexico's cocaine trafficking world. Born into narco royalty as the daughter of a Guadalajara cartel co-founder, Avila embraced her beauty and intelligence to forge her own path in the male-dominated drug industry. With briefcases brimming with millions in cash, she became a formidable figure, earning the illustrious title of the Queen of the Pacific. 
The unapologetic cocaine queen skillfully navigated the perilous terrain of the drug trade, leveraging her connections and expertise to excel in the business. With the advantage of being related to a drug kingpin, Avila learned a lot through her exposure to the business. A crucial encounter with Amando Carrillo Fuentes, the infamous Lord of the Skies, played a pivotal role in her ascent to power when she was only 21. While her physical allure garnered attention, it was Avila's invaluable contributions and unwavering commitment that commanded respect, shattering the disposable image often imposed on women in the narco realm. Within her tumultuous journey, Avila's personal relationships also held significance. Reports suggest that she engaged in affairs with prominent drug barons during her youth. Her family connections ran deep with her great-uncle facing extradition on drug trafficking charges and her marriages involving ex-police commanders turned traffickers who tragically met their demise. Notably, her most recent relationship with Juan Diego Espinosa Ramirez, also known as the Tiger, played an essential role in her rise to power given his association to the Colombian Norte del Valle cartel. However, Avila's extravagant lifestyle caught up to her. Her son was kidnapped in 2002, marking a turning point that forced her to live the life of seclusion as a fugitive. She experienced a stark contrast to the anonymity she once enjoyed outside the drug world. Ultimately, her journey led to her arrest in 2007 alongside her lover, the Colombian cocaine dealer, the Tiger. Avila endured seven years behind bars, including a daunting two-year stint in solitary confinement. In a candid 2016 interview, she readily expressed her lack of remorse for her career, viewing drug consumption as a matter of personal choice rather than a moral judgment. She also shed light on the deep-seated corruption within the industry, unmasking the complicity of politicians. Number 3 Luz Irene Farjado Campos In a world dominated by male drug traffickers, Luz Irene Farjado Campos shattered the glass ceiling of expectations. Defying societal norms, this former lawyer embarked on a clandestine journey into the dark abyss of cocaine and meth smuggling, known by a myriad of aliases such as La Comadre, La Madrina, La Dona, and Jenka. Campos commanded an empire alongside her two sons, operating from the heart of Culiacan, Mexico. While allied with the notorious Sinaloa cartel, her organization fiercely maintained its autonomy. According to tenacious U.S. federal authorities, Campos established her criminal empire in 2010. With a fleet of personal aircraft, she orchestrated the intricate logistics of importing Colombian cocaine ensuring its safe passage to Mexico. Her sons, working in tandem with Sinaloa cartel members, skillfully smuggled the illicit substances into the United States, fueling the insatiable appetite of the American drug market. But Campos's ambitions did not stop at cocaine. She delved into the treacherous world of methamphetamine production, importing chemicals into Mexico. Under her watchful eye, a secret desert laboratory churned out the highly addictive drug, with distribution networks spanning Tucson, Arizona, Jackson, Mississippi, and various corners of the United States. Bureaucratic obstacles along the trafficking routes were easily overcome through strategic bribery of corrupt public officials. The operation's immense wealth effortlessly greased the wheels of complicity. However, unbeknownst to Campos, the authorities had their sights firmly locked on her operation, their vigilance unyielding when it came to dismantling high-profile smuggling syndicates. The reign of La Comadre finally met its reckoning in April 2017, when Campos was apprehended at Bogota's El Dorado International Airport in Colombia. Extradited to the United States, she staunchly refused to plead guilty, defiantly standing her ground as she awaited trial. Tragedy struck with devastating force as Campos endured an unspeakable loss. Her sons were found brutally murdered, their dismembered bodies left behind in their torched truck back in Sinaloa. The identities of the perpetrators remain cloaked in mystery, leaving open the chilling possibility that this heinous act was a warning to Campos to maintain her silence. The crushing weight of grief plunged her mental health into a spiral, 
yet she clung unwaveringly to her plea of innocence. The scales of justice eventually tipped against Campos, as she was found guilty of conspiracy to distribute 5 kilograms or more of cocaine, as well as manufacturing and distributing methamphetamine with full knowledge that the drugs would be smuggled into the United States. The sentence handed down was merciless, 22 years of incarceration, followed by five years of post-release supervision. Additionally, she was ordered to forfeit a staggering $18 million. The severity of her punishment stands as a stark contrast to the more lenient sentences often meted out to other female drug lords. Campos's unwavering refusal to cooperate painted her case as a tragic Greek drama. Her defense attorney, Robert Fatel, queried the unfathomable logic behind jeopardizing the lives of the remaining members of her family after already suffering the loss of two beloved children. Number 2. Jessica Osaguerra Known as La Negra, Jessica Osaguerra is the daughter of Nemesio Osaguerra Cervantes, the infamous leader of the Jalisco New Generation Cartel, also known as El Mencho. This ruthless cartel has earned a fearsome reputation in Mexico, not only for its astronomical profits, but also for its unparalleled brutality. With a network of 5,000 merciless hitmen at their disposal, the cartel is notorious for beheading its enemies and disposing of their bodies in vats of acid. As a dual citizen of the United States and Mexico, Jessica fell under the watchful gaze of American authorities due to suspicions of aiding her father in money laundering operations. Front businesses, including a resort, a tequila company, and multiple sushi restaurants were allegedly used to launder illicit funds for the cartel. The U.S. Justice Department asserted that these enterprises were specifically designated to provide material support to the criminal syndicate. In a dramatic turn of events, Jessica was apprehended in 2020 while attempting to cross the border into the United States. Initially, she vehemently denied any involvement in her father's criminal activities. However, she eventually pleaded guilty to violating the Foreign Narcotics Kingpin Designation Act. Sentenced to a surprisingly lenient 30 months in prison, Jessica's light punishment fueled speculation that she had turned on her own father to secure a plea deal. Further fueling these rumors was her early release in April 2022, serving just 25 months of her sentence, raising suspicions of her potential role as an informant. While it remains plausible that Jessica may have provided crucial information about her former associates, her release was in accordance with the First Step Act, enacted by former President Donald Trump in 2018. This relatively new policy aimed to reduce the federal prison population while upholding public safety. Jessica's demonstration of remorse during her court proceedings may have also influenced her lenient sentence. Not only did she acknowledge her crimes, but she also expressed sincere apologies for her actions and any harm caused by her involvement in criminal activities. The enigmatic case of Jessica Oseguera sheds light on the intricate dynamics of cartel operations and the complex choices made by individuals entangled in the treacherous world of organized crime. As the rumors persist and her role as a potential informant lingers in the shadows, the true extent of her involvement and her motivations remain shrouded in uncertainty. Number 1. Majorie Dadiana Chacon Rossell In the shadowy realm of drug cartels, Majorie Dadiana Chacon Rossell emerged as a dominant force, earning the ominous nickname La Reina del Sur, the Queen of the South. Her criminal organization facilitated the smooth passage of cocaine from Colombia and Mexico through Guatemala and into the United States. Regarded by the U.S. Treasury Department as one of Central America's most prolific traffickers, Chacon collaborated with various cartels, also serving as a prominent supplier to their operations. Rumors swirled of Chacon's influence over former Guatemalan President Otto Perez Molina and Vice President Roxana Baldetti, with allegations suggesting substantial financial contributions to their political party prior to the 2011 elections. 
Both Shakan and the politicians vehemently denied these claims, although skeptics found it suspicious when Guatemalan authorities announced the absence of evidence against her in 2012. Yet beneath the surface, US law enforcement had long been monitoring Shakan's activities. The Drug Enforcement Administration had her in their sights since 2008, aided by incarcerated traffickers who provided tips in exchange for leniency. In 2010, an insider from Shakan's inner circle began cooperating, sealing her fate as the noose tightened. In a surprising turn of events, Shakan voluntarily surrendered to American authorities in 2014, enlisting the services of a skilled attorney. The following year, she pleaded guilty to conspiring to traffic cocaine, prompting Guatemala's interior minister to confirm ongoing criminal investigations against her. Despite her deep involvement in the drug trade, her cooperation and legal representation secured a shockingly lenient sentence of a mere 12 years. Subsequently, she was released on bail, adding another chapter to her enigmatic saga. Shakan's reign as the Queen of the South exposed the intricate web of drug trafficking across borders. Her ability to navigate the treacherous landscape of cartels and evade capture for an extended period showcased her audacious determination. As the true extent of her influence and connections slowly unravel, the impact of her actions continue to reverberate within the corridors of power, leaving a trail of questions and lingering doubts. Thanks for watching. Would you rather be caught in the middle of a DEA cocaine bust because you were simply in the wrong place at the wrong time, or serve one week in prison? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time on The Bad Badger.